I am Steven at home from skillcult.com and this is my video for the Instructable Survival Contest. This video is about how to make a hand drill fire with no pre-gathered materials or tools. So I'm going to collect the materials to make a fire, find some rocks used for tools, and bust out a fire. The hand drill kit consists of only two parts. There's a small diameter straight drill and then a small board called the hearth that you drill the drill into. So I'll be looking for multiple things. One is the hearth, another is the drill. I need some tinder, like some fluffy bark or something like that. And I need stones that I can break up to make tools. I already know one plant I'm looking for, which is this one here, mule fat, which makes great drills. So this is a dry creek bed right now, but when it rains hard, this all floods. And you can see here that these plants get pushed over almost every year and then they grow back. So all the new growth here is straight. So I've been digging around through this dead white gray stuff here, looking for a few good drills. And I grab a few, but none of them are really that great. So I'm gonna keep looking. So I've got a couple rocks here. These are chert, which is similar to uh, flint or maybe agate. And I have a few big rocks to bust these open with. The chert in this area is really cruddy. It's hard to find pieces that flake really clean. But all we need is some pretty crude cutting edges. That'll work. So I'm going to bust off a few more of these. Here's a good example of the kind of dry, dead, sort of driftwood type stuff that you find in creeks a lot. And uh, this can make really good hearths because it's usually extremely dry. The fact that it's been gotten wet over and over and over again actually makes it more dry, has more of a dry characteristic to it. So I'm going to collect a few pieces of this, which is willow, but I'm going to look around more too. What I really want is I want some roots that look like this, that are dead, sticking out of the bank that have been wetted over and over after they died, and those are often really good. So I found a uh, cottonwood tree here. There's a couple of limbs that have fallen off, and there's a bunch of good stringy bark here. I mean, this stuff is like, almost like paper. Amazing. This is almost too easy. This is a lot more than I need. This is really good stuff. It's a real fluffy and dry. Pretty amazing. Okay, this is good stuff. This is a uh, mugwort and these dead leaves make really good tinder. You just rub them up and they make this amazing cottony stuff. Look at that. All right, this is what I'm looking for. These are cottonwood roots and they're sticking out of the bank here, but they're dead and very dry and brittle. That's what I've been looking for. Not only are they dead and dry, but they also have some nice shreddy bark that we can use as tinder. Not that I don't already have enough. So I think I probably have everything I need here, except I'm not too happy with the drills I have. So I'm down here, further downstream, scouting for some better drills. Might be something good in here. Well, here we go. Let's see what we can do with this. All right, let's see what we have here. Tender looks great, no problems there. It's rained a couple times, it's October, but it's been a really dry fall and I think everything here is going to be dry enough. The only thing I have a question about is the cottonwood roots. I'm just going to pick out the straightest drill that's the right diameter. Well, I 
like this one. There's a few different things I might need a stone tool for. I'm going to use one to cut this drill right now. But uh, so you can see these edges are pretty sharp. This is not bad stuff. I wouldn't want to try to make, you know, flake an arrowhead out of it or anything, but we don't need to. In fact, most people concentrate way too much on learning more refined flint napping techniques and not enough time learning how to just make basic flake tools and, and actually use them. So what I'm going to do is just put a few little teeth in here and I'm going to use a rock because that's what I have handy. Because this edge is very sharp and brittle and I want it to be more like a saw. Eh, somewhere in here. This wood is really brittle, so all I'm going to do is score around it. And then snap it off. Same thing up here. This end's really not very important. Pretty crooked. This wood is so dry and brittle that I won't really be able to straighten it, but I think I can work with this drill. So now I need to smooth this off, get rid of all these knots here. Should be able to do that with some pieces of sandstone. I think I'll go find a piece that's real gritty, just so it'll go faster. All right, so I've chosen this cottonwood root here for the hearth. I'm actually just gonna kind of break this up without too much of a plan here. Hmm, well that would work. I'd like to be able to take something like this and actually split it in half, but this is so brittle, I'm not sure that would work. So I'm gonna see what it's like to cut this. It's pretty easy. All right, so I got one side kind of flat. I'm just gonna flatten the other side. I just want this to be a little bit thinner. Okay, this uh, feels a little bit maybe too soft and spongy, but if it doesn't work, we'll just try a different one. So next I need a little space for the drill to sit in and start spinning. If I just try to spin it like this, it'll, it'll just wander all over the place. So I need to make a little divot with the stone. Now this feels really soft. I think this may be too soft. We're gonna give it a try though. So now the drill will spin in one spot. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is called seeding the drill. And I'm just gonna spin this until it starts to burn in a little bit. And that will make it burn in uh, just the spot that I want it in. Whoa, way too soft. Look at that. I'm halfway through already. Next. Okay, so I kind of like this piece because it's already split and it may just split into a convenient board or not. All right, this piece might work. So we're gonna do the same thing. Carve a little spot here. So next we need to cut a notch, and the notch is going to go about two-thirds of the way to the middle of this hole. What the notch does is it allows the, uh, the powder that's going to form 
from drilling these two woods together, it'll be like a charred powder and it's gonna fall into the notch and it's gonna build up there until it gets hot enough to turn into a burning ember. Okay, so now we're closer to the hole. I won't have to carve as long of a notch. Well, that wasn't so bad. Well, my notch is a little off center here, but it should work. As you can see, it goes part way to the center of the hole, but not all the way. That's how I like it anyway. Not everyone does it the same. Now normally at home, I would just kind of flake out and make my coal first and then grab some tinder and throw it together. But I am only gonna get one chance at this hole right here because this wood's pretty soft, it's gonna burn through fast. So I really wanna make sure that I catch this coal. So I'm making something resembling a bird's nest. So there's the, the base inside of that i'm going to fluff up some material a little bit more just a little bit more fluffy this is all cottonwood bark and here's the mugwort i love this stuff you rub it between your hands and it just turns it's almost like tailor made for tender it's just real real cottony so that's going to go in the middle to catch the coal and spread it right away so there you go Okay, to set this up, I'm just gonna find a place where I can get this nice and firm. I like this rock here, because it's kind of sandy. And then I'm gonna put one dead leaf to catch the coal. Make sure it's dead. If it's green, it could make your coal go out. Been there, done that. So I'd like to explain a few things before I start drilling. I can't cover all the kind of coaching tips and stuff I'd like to in this short video, but I will be doing a lot more material on the hand drill in the future. The basic motion of hand drilling is you put the drill in the hearth and you spin the drill. Okay, there's several factors at work here. One of them is how fast you spin the drill or slow. The other one is how hard you're pushing down. So as you're drilling, you're also bearing down on this and pushing downward. Since the drill is slightly tapered, you can push pretty hard. You can trade off each of those two things one for the other to a certain extent. You can go lighter but faster, or really hard but slower. Or of course you can do a lot of both. And that'll vary depending on the situation. However, what is more important is consistency of pressure. Now, regardless of how fast you're going or how hard you're pushing, the consistency of your downward pressure is of the utmost importance. So it's pretty clumsy to go like this really fast while continuously pushing downward. But if your en the energy that you're pushing down is kind of going up and down like this, and you won't necessarily see the drill hopping up and down, but that's what's happening, then you just are not gonna build up heat. So that's the most important thing is consistent downward pressure. Drills are usually kind of slippery. You can put pine pitch on your hands. I usually just lick my hand, and sometimes during drilling, I'll stop and just lick my hand really quick. You need a good grip on the drill, and that's the gist of it. In terms of positions, you can sit like this and put your foot here and drill, or you can sit on your butt and put the side of your foot, or you can take just some other stick like this, say, put it here, get on your knees, and hold the board down like that. Just make sure it's good and firm though. You know, screw around with it until you get it right because it's really important that this board doesn't wobble too much because if it wobbles, it's stealing energy from your whole process here. The good thing about this position is that you can get your body weight over the top of the drill. So that's a pretty good method, especially for beginners. My personal preference is to sit like this. It means my knee is not in the way. Okay, so I'm gonna use a strategy here where I warm the kit up by doing a bunch of drilling, very light, but pretty fast. The other factor at work here is that this wood is very soft, so I may not get a coal before I wear all the way through it. 
So I want to get it as hot as I can without wearing it away. And then at the end, I'm going to push hard to get the coal to light on fire. This also gives me a chance to warm myself up, get my blood pumping, get blood to my muscles, get my muscles loosened up. Okay, I'm gonna go for it. All right, when you see smoke coming out of the little pile of powder, you know you got it. Now, you don't wanna rush this. By the way, I think this board is alder, but I can't tell for sure, it's just a piece of driftwood. You actually wanna give this a little bit of time for that coal to spread and form a big lump. Because think about it, when it first starts, it's just a little speck. So um, I could sit here and talk for, you know, a minute or two probably, as long as the wind isn't gonna blow it away. Okay, so this coal has formed a nice lump. I'm gonna put it into my tinder bundle. Look at that. Okay, I'm not gonna build this up any. You know, just adding twigs is easy enough. I mean, think about how easy it is to light a fire with this versus just a match. So think about this for a minute. Think about what this means. Life without fire is lame. Lame, okay? I now have heat. I have light. I have a way to cook food. I can sterilize water. I can heat sticks and straighten them. I can burn things to shape them. I have charcoal. I have ashes for using for other processes like processing hides or whatever. Same goes with smoke. Smoke's great. You can preserve food with it. You can tan hides with it. Wow, fire. Look, fire. Look, it's not even cold and I'm warming my hands. Why, because it's fire. Look, fire from some simple sticks and some fluffy stuff. Obviously the time to learn this stuff is before you need it. Just don't expect to go out and uh, bust out a fire when you need it just because you watched this dumb video. Like I said, I will be producing a lot more material on the hand drill. It is my favorite method by far. It is so simple and that's why it's so universal. This was probably the most common method used to make fire the world over and for good reason. I hope this video was edifying for you in some way. How cool is that? Fire from sticks. Simple sticks, a few broken rocks, and we're good to go.